This channel is supported by my online fishing courses, and you can learn more and get significant discounts at saltstrong.com skinner. I'll have links to all of the gear in the video description. All right, back in my kayak, and after all of that kayak fishing in Florida, I have to tell you, it's very strange to be out on the water and not be looking for dolphins, manatees, and sharks. But nope, this is uh, eastern Long Island, looking for fluke. Nobody here. Weather not looking so great. Ah, uh, well, we'll see what we can do. I'm gonna try to work some bar edges. I'm drifting like way too fast right here, 2.4. That's current, the wind, everything together. Um, I'll use the pedals to to deal with that if I have to. I'll figure it out. So word is that the fluke that are in here are like on crabs and uh, stuff like that. So whenever that's the case, it's one of the few times where I really do mess around with the bucktail color. Um, try to go with this kind of brownish orange. And then really the big thing is for the teaser, just a hook and a gulp shrimp, and that's it. And when they're, they're on crabs and stuff, well, that's deadly. But then I'll put a, uh, a grub on the, uh, the swimming well on the bottom. All right, I'm gonna get up near the bar and drift off. I think I'm gonna um, pedal into this wind, though. I mean, you can, the drift sock would be another way to deal with it, but Actually, the pedaling, I think, is even better because you can really adjust it. Drift sock does whatever it just drift sock does. All right, and as soon as I got on the water, I realized my first screw up of the trip is uh, yeah, you see, I've got my fish finder slash plotter there, um, and I had this whole rig down in Florida. Well, I've got a Navionics chip in there that gives me um, the, the bay contour and, and all of that, except. Yeah, the Navionics chip that's in that unit right now is for Florida. It's uh, for a different region because that's the way it works is different cards for different regions. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't have the charting capability, so it's kind of uh, a disappointment. Um, it turns out that uh, Humminbird's now got something called a Coastmaster card that has all of the regions on one card. If I am understanding it correctly, this is like a lot of other information and it looks like they're about the same price as the Navionics, so maybe I'm going to go that route so I can have one card for both places. But anyway, I'll figure it out. Um, I, I don't have sunlight to really read the bars either, so but I'll, I'll, I'll figure out where to fish. And the rod giveaway winner will be announced at the end. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe. And yeah, that fluke came to the surface pretty quick, a lot faster than when we're fishing in Montauk. Uh, I'm in eight feet of water. That's actually relatively deep for this bay. I'm going to fish slightly deeper. All right, and uh, yep, they need to be 19 inches, and this guy uh, is going to be about 18 or so. All right, you heard me mention at the start that uh, between the wind and the current, I had a drift speed over two miles an hour, and that's definitely faster than I want to be drifting. So you see what I'm doing? I'm pedaling there a little bit. And two things I'm doing there is, one is keep the direction um, basically into the wind a little bit there, and uh, you know keep the pointy part into the wind so that the kayak is not catching so much wind. The other thing is um, it's kind of acting like a drift sock. I'm just knocking down the wind component of the drift, trying to keep myself more in the, um, just about what the current speed is, which is a little bit over one mile an hour. And it's pretty easy to do with the pedal kayak. All right, I have markings on the rod butt so I can measure the fish against it. And uh, this guy's just short of 19 inches.
All right, I know that's a keeper saw. So I just hit a mark on the uh, on the unit there, so I can get back on this. Um, you know, I've got marks from previous seasons, but things change a little bit, and uh, yeah, I just need a reference point for the, the next drifts. Yeah, I don't think my feet ever came off the pedals on this trip, and um, certainly if you had a boat, the trolling motor would be ideal to uh, control the drift. So I switched from a swimming mullet on the bucktail to a sand eel, and uh, this one grabbed the sand eel. This one's actually a keeper. I'm going to let you go. That's two keepers. Yeah, I let that one grow a little more. Um, I haven't been out that long. I'm pretty confident I'm going to get some more. Nice one. Really a bad net job. So I only had that one gulp sand eel that happened to be in the jar, and uh, that one got lost. So I've switched to a gulp nemesis on the bucktail. And uh, yeah, so look at that, another keeper on, on the bucktail. You're not seeing all the fish. Uh, I'm getting a bunch of shorts also, and they fall into two categories. They're either 18 plus or they're around 12. I'm not really getting anything in that um, 15 to 17 inch range, which is kind of odd because other places where I've caught a lot of shorts, most of those fish are around 16, 17 inches, but not here. Ooh. Oh! Nothing straightened, nothing broke, just came off. Damn. Oh, I'd like to have that one back. That one was strong. In fact, if you, s you notice, I went for my drag because he really dove hard. Uh, that was a nice fish, and they've been catching some nice fish in this bay. So, yeah, sorry to lose that one. Definitely a keeper. So uh, I've definitely caught more fish on the teaser, but the, the keepers, most of them uh, on the bucktail. All right, one of the big challenges of kayak fishing on a bay is that you have to deal with boat waves. In fact, I actually picked a day with so-so weather to try to keep the boat traffic down. Uh, so some interesting things are going to happen here. First, uh, just observe this boat that's going to come by, uh, and I'll explain. Okay, what he's doing, that's the normal path the boats take here, and I do not expect that they should slow down. My attitude is uh, I need to handle the waves that come at me on the water. I know that when they come around, they kind of make a turn there, and 
a good sized boat that was almost a, a, like a 30 foot center console um, they're going to throw a decent wave and I need to deal with that and I deal with it by putting the bow into it pushing the kayak into it not a problem so this is all going to go very smoothly and uh, you know it's just something to, to be aware of that when I'm fishing on the on the bay that I need to keep my eyes open for this and, and deal with it in this fashion this is just absolutely routine but in a minute it's not going to be so routine Spitting up crabs. Yeah, I think he's just sh short. He's definitely just short. But Okay, another somewhat larger boat moving a little faster has come by and uh, it takes about 90 seconds for the waves to get to me. I made a couple of mistakes here. I saw these waves, you know, because when you're in a kayak, you don't really see behind you very well. And I thought, I thought to myself, wow, those waves are kind of small, but those weren't the real ones. Here they come. And so now I'm a little bit delayed on my reaction. I've been kayak fishing about 20 years, and I've never felt like I was going to flip. Uh, this may not have looked so bad, but i got to tell you, I was, I was concerned here. And here's my mistake. I stopped pedaling into it. I think I was a little surprised by the size of these. I was caught off guard, and because I didn't pedal here, it has knocked me to the side. If that the rudder turned all the way, it's not enough. The waves are pushing me. Boy, give me one more big wave like that, and guess what? Uh, a lesser kayak, I think I'm going over. It turns out this kayak, it's, it's kind of like a tri-hull, so it's very stable and um, very hard to flip. So I think with a narrower kayak, that could have been a problem. Um, I'm a little mad at myself. I shouldn't make a mistake like that. And, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, I just have to be more careful. And with anything I do, I always think about the worst case scenario. Hey, worst case scenario is I go over, I lose gear. I've got a life vest on, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to upright the kayak, get back on, and, you know, that's it. I'd get wet and cold, but I would also get home in one piece. Okay, I now have wind against current, and I'm dealing with that by pedaling slowly into the wind. So it's a slow troll into the wind. Hmm. Yeah, this is a good one. So normally I'd rather backpedal in that situation so that the line is in front of me, uh, but I'm going forward in the situation so that I can see what's ahead of me because I have to deal with things like bow traffic. Okay, my regular viewers know that I always bleed fish that I'm going to eat. Uh, it's easy to do in the boat. This is what I do in the kayak. Just get them on a rope, uh, make a really good slit in the gills, and that will bleed them out. They'll die quickly and preserve the meat quality. Then I have a really good cooler bag in the back, and I'll stick that fish on ice. And I forgot to get that bag on video, but I'll have a link in the video description. And sharks are zero concern here, so I wouldn't do this around sharks. Okay, courtesy of Jigging World and in appreciation of my channel reaching the 100,000 subscriber mark, I'm giving away a Nexus rod to one of my subscribers, and the winner is B Mac, M A K. So, congrats and get a hold of me, and if you don't, I'll get a hold of you. 
Okay, if you like this video, please hit the like button, and if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe.